this is the in focus podcast from the hindu hello and welcome to another episode of the hindu's in focus podcast i'm zubeda hamid your host for today just as the new year 2025 began there was panic once again in the media Reports of a supposedly new respiratory virus that had caused a surge of infections in China began to do the rounds, fueling speculation about its entry into India. Suddenly, human metapneumovirus or HMPV became a buzzword. Headlines were full of it, cases were being detected in India, and there was alarm all around. Doctors and the Union Health Ministry said over and over again that this was not a new virus and it is not unknown in India. But what is HMPV? and why was such a furor caused over it we decode this virus with dr v rama subramanian consultant infectious diseases specialist at apollo hospital in chennai and medical director capstone multi specialty clinic hello and welcome to the hindus in focus podcast dr rama subramanian thank you for being with us today doctor let's get started There has been so much hype about this new respiratory infection that's doing the rounds which apparently is not even a new infection. Could you break it down for us a little bit? Tell us what HMPV is all about. Okay, this human metapneumovirus is not a new virus. I repeat, it is a virus which has been with us for several decades. Actually, the virus was identified only 25 years back, but it has been present for the last about 70 80 years at least and it is one of the respiratory viruses very similar to say the influenza virus the covid virus the the rhino virus which causes the common cold or the respiratory syncytial virus so these are all respiratory viruses which are spread by the aerosol route it is believed that probably the human metapneumovirus came from the birds like the avian influenza most of the influenza viruses have come from birds and it is believed that this also probably originated from the migratory birds and then it is seen in man but it is distinctly different from the the viruses which are seen in the animal or the bird species and like all respiratory viruses this is spread through aerosol which means by coughing or sneezing the virus attaches to droplets and can spread directly to somebody close to you or it may fall on surfaces which if somebody touches and takes their hand near the nose they can get it and this in general is a very innocuous virus this unlike the influenza viruses which mutates or which changes quite a lot this doesn't do that so it's basically a more or less harmless virus that's like the common cold is that correct yes it is similar the only probably slight differences in adults it does not even cause fever so it is as good as a cold but in children under 5 years of age in elderly people over 65 70 years of age and people with a compromised immune system this virus can cause a little more symptomatic disease which may require hospitalization you spoke to us about a lot of respiratory illnesses and viruses that are very common these days tell us doctor why was there uh, the identification of this virus why did it cause such a furor uh, and how do we even know that this virus is now doing the rounds when for all we know it has been around as you said for so many years and we've all been dealing with it quite well one this is a very innocuous virus i told you this is like the cold virus maybe a little more active in the elderly or young children or immunocompromised but it is otherwise just as good as a cold virus which we don't bother about we just sniffle a bit use our uh, tissues and then we get along with life so this is something similar so why is it that it is causing a problem right now number 1 our ability to diagnose this virus has improved ever since the onset of covid we have come up with several tests typically the respiratory viral tests which are done by taking a swab from the upper part of your nose which can detect not only covid it detects influenza it detects uh, respiratory syncytial virus and a host of another viruses and it comes as a panel so when you do the panel you tend to pick it up the panel is expensive it costs uh, i think about 7 or 8000 rupees so it is not routinely done and the government of india also restricts or discourages the use of doing the panel because most of the viruses require only symptomatic treatment 
So spending on this and you know scaring the public is not on the government's uh, agenda. So they have said use it only in sick patients who may require hospitalization. So we do it only for hospitalized patients who are maybe in the ICU and we are now picking it more because this is part of the panel. Otherwise, this has been around for quite a while. In India, we are picking it up more. Number two, in the winter, this is a winter virus. This is a seasonal virus. So just like all other viruses, including influenza and RSV, this is seen more in winter. And right now being winter in most parts of the Northern Hemisphere, this is picked up more. Number three, the main problem, which I think is probably the culprit or something which is actually not correct, is the fact that this rumor that in China there is a host of cases who are dying of this disease is an entirely false information. I have discussed with colleagues in China, this is not you know, causing a problem there. This is not increased in this part, this part of the, the, the uh, year. This is what is normally expected, what normally happens. What is, this is what we are seeing. So the main problem is that the wrong news, sensationalism by the media saying that people are dying or they are getting, you know, hospitals are getting, uh, you know, filled with these patients is completely wrong. That's a very clear explanation. Thank you, doctor. One of the things you said was that it could uh, affect small children and the elderly and people with weakened immune systems a little more. Is that the reason that the cases that have been picked up in India are of children who've had bronchitis and who have been hospitalized? That's correct. Because as I said, we do these tests which are expensive, not routinely in the outpatient. This is only reserved for patients who are admitted and probably in the ICU due to you know, some reason is typically breathing difficulties or pneumonia. So because the immune system of young children and the elderly people are compromised, they are not robust, and also the people who are immunocompromised who can have a, sli a slightly worse, you know, manifestation of the disease, unlike just a nose block, a runny nose, a little bit of a cough and a wheeze, this can lead to breathing difficulty, this can lead to a pneumonia. It is in these populations that we do the test and naturally, it is in these people we pick it up. And as I said, this is not new. In 2024, in Apollo hospitals where I work, we have done close to 1,000 respiratory viral panels. And including adults and children, uh, the, the, the rough estimate is about 4 to 5% in uh, adults and about uh, 4 to 6% in children. We have picked up this virus, either alone or in combination with other viruses as part of the respiratory panel. So this is not new. This is what we see every year. And this is just, as I said, something which has come out of the blue due to media hype. Is the uh, one of the reasons that respiratory illnesses seem to be more severe over the past few years during the winters, is it because of the lockdown induced, the fact that people were inside their homes for so long and did not get exposed enough, perhaps? That's very fanciful thinking. No, we are just picking more of it. It is not that we are seeing the number of cases has increased. Our ability to detect, diagnose is better now in the last four years because of the, the scare which COVID has created. But otherwise, I don't think we are seeing any increased number of these virus infections at all. So the numbers have remained the same pre and post pandemic? Yes. Tell us a little bit about the fact that you said there is no vi vaccine for this virus, correct? Correct. So tell us a little bit about what else could help. Do you think that taking the influenza virus is uh, influenza vaccine is a good idea for most of the population? Taking the influenza vaccine is a fabulous idea for most of the population, but it has got nothing to do with human metanumovirus. Influenza is still a major killer. It kills a lot of children under five and people over the age of 65. It precipitates heart attack and strokes in a significant number of the elderly. So taking the influenza vaccine is absolute no-brainer for most people, especially people in the high-risk group, as I said, the elderly and the young children. But that only protects against the flu and that protects against the heart attacks and strokes, which a lot of flu uh, infections can precipitate. It does not do anything for the metanumovirus. But having said that, the usual preventive measures for all respiratory viruses, whether it is COVID or flu or RSV or metanemovirus remains the same, which means social distancing. Those who are unwell should definitely use masks or stay at home. For all the others, wear a mask if you are in very crowded places. Use hand hygiene periodically so that even by chance you take your hand near your nose, your hands are clean. And ensure that 
those who are unwell or are feeling a little worse off with breathing difficulty should go to hospitals to have themselves checked out. Nothing else. And take your flu shot up also. So the basic COVID precautions basically continue to follow them. That's right. Does the cold weather make it worse, doctor? As you said, this is a seasonal thing. Absolutely. All the respiratory viruses in general prefer the cold. And uh, the occurrence of these infections in the northern hemisphere, in the typically where countries where they face severe cold, including India, typically in the northern parts of India, yes, this is a problem. But having said that, in places like Chennai, which are tropical, these infections are not seasonal. They can occur all through the year. You said that we do not routinely test for this virus, correct, doctor? Yeah, we don't routinely test because, as I said, this is an innocuous virus. So testing it, spending money to test it when there is no treatment available doesn't make any sense to me. So you wouldn't recommend, so for instance, anybody and everybody who has fever will not be able to go to a hospital and routinely find out what the virus is, correct? Absolutely unnecessary. It's a waste of resources. And in adults, this does not even cause fever. So this doesn't even figure in the diagnosis of fever. I would think of COVID or flu rather than, uh, you know, metanemovirus in a patient who has respiratory symptoms and fever. What would you say to sort of calm people down in the midst of all of this furor? What is it that you can, cannot do? What do you do when you have children and this is something that you, or elderly people at home, and this is something that you just want to be aware of? My advice is pure common sense. Number one, don't Google too much. Don't look at the news. Don't hear the news and don't get carried away with the news because whatever is news is another person's reporting. And unfortunately, a lot of reporting, I'm sorry to say, is not verified now. We just say it is happening in China. Do we actually know what is happening in China? Half the channels which report the news, I don't think they just follow whatever somebody else has written. So that is the first important thing. Stop Googling and be sensible. Number two, you need to follow all the respiratory etiquette as it's called, the cough etiquette. When you cough, you have to cover your mouth and nose. When you, If you cough into your hands, wash your hands or use alcohol gel. Use your hand hygiene periodically or frequently. When you are in crowded places, use a mask. If you are having cold, stay at home. And if you have to go, make sure you wear a mask. This is simple common sense. Number two, every year, you need to have your flu shot. If you're living in Chennai, the flu shot is recommended in the September of every year when you get a new dose. If you are in other parts of Chennai where the monsoon hits by June, you need to take the Southern Hemisphere vaccine, the flu vaccine, which is available generally by March or April of that year. Every year you need to take and specifically for people who are elderly or children under the age of five. But having said that, I recommend it for all people because if you stay protected, you don't get the infection, you are not going to pass it on to vulnerable people at home. So this is all I would recommend. This is no rocket science. This is just using taking your flu shot, cough etiquette and respiratory etiquette and being a little sensible with interpreting the news. And perhaps not falling for every single thing that seems to be emerging from China, right? <laughs> Absolutely right. Thank you so much for speaking to us today, Doctor. My pleasure. Thank you. In Focus will be back soon with analysis of the biggest news issues. In the meantime, you can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and other platforms. Just search for In Focus by The Hindu. We'll see you soon.